Hello everyone! In this quick Godot tutorial, we're going to see how to implement a basic mouse follow logic for a simple 2D game. By the end of the video, we'll have this basic scene with our ship avatar in the middle that follows the position of our cursor on screen. We'll give our avatar a particular speed so that it doesn't just instantly teleport to the mouse position, but rather glides towards it, which will allow us to avoid the asteroids around us while keeping the game fairly challenging. We'll also do some 2D drawing to visualize the target position more clearly. As usual, don't forget that if you want to get the files of this tutorial directly, you can have a look at the GitHub repo with all my Goto tutorials over here. And with that said, let's dive in and see how to set up this simple mouse follow logic. Okay, before we get to the gliding part, let's first set up our system for an instant teleport. This way we'll get familiar with how to get the current mouse position when the cursor moves, and how to make our ship object update its position. For now, my scene contains two simple spawners at the top of the screen for asteroids and bonuses, either repair pills or stars. Those spawners regularly create new instances, and then those objects fall down in the direction of the ship. If the player collides with an asteroid, we get a quick screen shake, and the asteroid is destroyed and we lose life. If it collides with a bonus, we pick it up and update the remaining lives or stars counter accordingly. But of course, for now, we can't move anywhere, so that's not really a game. To actually move our ship and avoid these obstacles and get those bonuses, we're going to create a new c -sharp script for a ship called Player Ship and place it on the root node of the Player Ship subscene in the project. You see that this root node is a kinematic body 2D node. We'll see the benefits of this node type in a short while, but for now, it basically means that we can easily set its position as with any not 2 d derived type. So in our Player Ship script, We'll first make sure that the playership class inherits from Node2D and not from the default Node class, and then we'll override the input function. As I've discussed in my last Godot tutorial on how to do a simple point-and-click navigation system, this function makes it really easy to listen to and react to the various input events triggered by the players. Basically, whenever you move your mouse, or press a key, or click a mouse button, this function will be called with the current input event stored in this at events parameter. In our case, we're only interested in the mouse move events, so we can further specialize our function by adding an if check with an is expression. And this will allow us to monitor events that are of input event mouse motion type, or in other words, the mouse move events. If our variable at event is indeed of this type, then we cast it and store the casted version as a new local variable, event mouse move. Now all we have to do is get back the current mouse position in this event, which we can access with the dot position field, and use this value as our new value for the position of our ship hierarchy, using the built-in setPosition function. This method is available for any node 2D, so we can use it here thanks to our inheritance chain. Now if we restart the game, we see that our ship follows the mouse exactly, and we can easily avoid all the asteroids coming our way. That's pretty nice, but of course, it's a bit too easy. What would be better would be to have a little delay between the moment we move our cursor and define a new target position, and the moment our ship actually reaches this new target. This will create a slightly more demanding gameplay, and it will also make the game a bit more realistic. So let's level up and see how to make this improved version of our mouse follow logic. To create this upgraded version, the idea is that instead of directly assigning our ship position to match the one of the cursor, we're going to store this target mouse position in a variable and then have our ship slide towards it continuously, if it hasn't reached it yet. Luckily, this is once again fairly easy to do. The key thing to keep in mind that we're going to use here is that in Godot, whenever you want your objects to slide and have some velocity, it's better to turn to the body nodes, so the rigid bodies or the kinematic bodies. Rigid bodies are interesting when you've got complex physics, and you want the engine to compute the movement for you. When using rigid bodies, you just give your object forces and impulses, and then the rest, like applying gravity for example, is done for you by Godot. With kinematic bodies, on the other hand, you're totally in control. 
you apply the movement you won't see your object and they aren't affected by the physics at all. The nice thing is that the Kinematic Body Scripting API has really handy functions for interpolating the position of the object and that's actually what we're interested in here. So for this improved movement system, we need our playership root node to be of kinematic body 2D type like it's here. Of course, this means that we also have to have a collision shape 2D node as a child of our root to define the shape of our body. Here I'm using a simple circle shape. And that we also need to update the playership class to change its parent class from node 2D to kinematic body 2D. And now what's really cool is that inside the physics process function, which is available for any node and is called at a fixed rate by the engine to smoothly update your game loop, we can use the move and slide function. This function simply translates our object linearly according to the velocity we give it. And so in our case, it makes it straightforward to bring our ship towards the mouse cursor. Indeed, all we have to do is store the position of the mouse in a target position vector2 variable inside our class in the input function. And now that we've recorded this, in the physics process function, we can compute the vector that goes from our current position to this target position. And then we'll normalize it and remultiply it by an arbitrary value to get our final movement with the speed. By the way, remember that when working in 2D in Godot, all lengths are in pixel. So this value of 500 is actually not that big. To ensure the data is properly initialized, it is good practice to override the ready function of our node and set the target position equal to our current position when the game first starts. And also, to avoid flickering, it can be a good idea to only move our ship if it hasn't reached or almost reached the target position. Otherwise, we risk having the ship wobble around this position without ever stopping at the exact right pixel. So we're going to wrap our move logic inside an if statement that says we only do that if the distance to the target position is over a small threshold, for example 10 pixels. And if we relaunch the game, we see that our ship now glides towards our mouse cursor in a few seconds. It auto re-updates its target if we move the mouse, and it stops graciously when it has reached its destination point. So that's pretty cool, we now have a simple mouse follow system. But to wrap this up, we're going to do a last little bonus improvement. To help players anticipate the movement of the ship and avoid the asteroids, we're going to visually display the target position and the linear path our avatar will take to reach it, using Godot's 2D drawing features. Okay, to end this tutorial, let's do a bit of drawing. Most of the time, when we work in Godot, we use the built-in nodes to show things on screen. The sprites, UI elements and meshes are usually enough to display what we need. But sometimes you'll need to have more custom shapes and paths. For example, if you want to visualize a path 2D in your scene at runtime, although it's only visible in edit mode by default, you'll need to actually draw this curve by hand at runtime. To do this, Godot provides us with a really cool custom 2D drawing feature, which we can use simply by overriding the draw function in a canvas item derived class such as a node 2D. So we can define it here in our playership script, and it will allow us to directly draw things like lines, circles, rectangles, etc. Now here I want to show a basic visual with a line that goes from my current position to the target position, and a small circle at this target position. This can be done easily with the draw line and draw circle APIs. Of course, if you're curious about all the shapes you can draw, you should definitely check out the official Godot docs. So the draw line function expects the start and end position in 2D screen coordinates. However, those coordinates need to be relative to the position of our ship. So we have to give it the origin of our subscene for the start point, which corresponds to our current position in global coordinates, and the target position on screen in relative space for the end point, which we can get simply by subtracting our global position from it. Then the rest of the input parameters for this function are its color, which we can cache in our class and define in the ready function, the line thickness, as usual in pixels, and whether or not to enable entire liasing. For the draw circle function, we need to give the center of the circle, once again in relative coordinates, the radius and the color. 
Last but not least, we need to tell Godot to actually refresh the drawing state when we move around so that these visuals match the current target point. Otherwise, it will just be called once at the very beginning of the scene. For this, we just have to call the update method that is available for canvas items in our move logic, like this. And that's it! If we restart our game one last time, we see that we now have a simple in-game visual to help us anticipate the movement of a ship, the avatar slowly glides towards the cursor and we can therefore avoid the asteroids and pick up bonuses that spawn endlessly and fall to the bottom of the screen. So there you go! You've now got a simple example of how to set up a basic mouse follow logic in Godot and C-Sharp for a 2D game. I really hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and that you learned a few things to implementing kinematic movement in Godot and C-Sharp. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have other ideas of Godot tricks that you'd like to learn, go ahead and leave a comment down below. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.